Good morning all. Myself Benzi Marine Koshi of second semester CCM. Today I am here to present about types of foundation. We all know that foundation is the essential part of its structure. The basic function of providing foundation is to transfer the load from the structure to the earth safely. Uh, the ground surface that foundation rust is known as foundation bed. The functions are uh, functions of uh, providing foundations are to provide overall stability to the structure and increase structural stability. By providing foundation, the load distribution is carried out evenly and the soil movement effect is resisted and prevented by providing foundation. And also, the scouring and undermining issues are solved by the construction of foundation. These are the functions of providing foundation. Then, types of foundation. Uh, mainly, foundation are divided into two types, shallow foundation and deep foundation. Uh, shallow foundation means uh, the, sh the shallow foundation which transfer the load to a stratum present in a shallow depth or we can define it as the width of the foundation is greater than the depth, uh, it can be tamed as shallow foundation. And also, deep foundation which transfer the load to a deeper depth below the ground surface or it can be defined as a width is smaller than the depth of a foundation that is termed as deep foundation. Then shallow foundation can be again divided into uh, following types that is isolated spread footing, wall footing, combined footing, cantilever or strap footing, raft or mat foundation. Deep foundation can be divided into uh, three that is their pile foundation, pier foundation, Caison or well foundation. Going for isolated spread footing, it is a most economical type and it is generally used for ordinary buildings. Uh, it can be used uh, up to five stories, uh, depends on the um, soil characteristics, etc. Uh, then um, uh, this uh, isolated footing uh, is uh, consists of a foundation directly at the base of the segment and uh, by providing this isolated footing the load is transferred from the column to the soil directly uh, and also um, uh, the shape of the isolated spread footing are rectangular, square, round etc. Uh, the following types of uh, these are the types of isolated spread footing that is single pad footing, step to footing for a column, slope to footing for a column, wall footing without step, step footings for columns, grillage foundation. This is a figure showing isolated spread footing. We can see that a base segment and column is connected to the base segment. This is a figure of isolated. Next one is wall footing. It is also known as uh, continuous footing. Uh, in the uh, by providing this wall footing or continuous footing, uh, the hmm, load from the uh, structural or non-structural load bearing walls uh, uh, and the load is distributed to the ground. Uh, and also, uh, the width of the foundation is two or three times greater than the width of the wall. Uh, the construction of wall foundation, the materials used for the construction of wall foundation are stone, brick, RC members, etc. And also the wall footing is economical when the load transmitted are of a small magnitude and it is, it is placed on dense sand or gravel. This is a figure showing wall footing. We can see that uh, the width of the foundation is greater than the width of the wall. Next one is combined footing. Combined footing is similar to isolated footing and uh, in isolated, in combined footing, uh, a spread footing which is support two or more column is known as combined footing. The main objective of providing this combined footing is to distribute the lot uh, uniformly to the entire area of footing. Uh, the hmm, shape of the combined footings are rectangular trapezoidal combined column wall footing. This is a figure showing combined footing. Next one is cantilever or strap footing. It is also similar to combined footing. Uh, in this cantilever footing, columns, um, uh, columns, uh, the foundation under the columns is built individually and it is connected by using a strap. This can be Mm, seen in the figure, this is the uh, figure showing cantilever footing or strap footing. 
then a raft and mat foundation uh, it is used where shallow or deep foundation can be uh, cannot be suitable uh, then we are providing raft or mat foundation uh, in this foundation it consists of rc slab or t beam slab that is placed uh, in the area of the structure and the whole basement floor act as the foundation and the uh, total load of the structure is um, distributed evenly into the area. This is the figure showing raft or mud foundation. Next one is pile foundation. It is a type of deep foundation. It is a common type of deep foundation. Um, this pile foundation is formed by long slender columnar elements that is made up of steel or RC member. Sometimes it is made up of timber. Uh, for piled foundation, we can define it as its depth is more than three times its breadth. Uh, then uh, this pile foundation is adopted when there is no uh, hard strata uh, is available. Uh, we can provide pile foundation there uh, and the uh, loading is uneven. We can use pile foundation. Uh, and we can simply define pile foundation is a slender member with a small cross-sectional area that is compared to its length uh, and also it is used to, to transmit foundation load from foundation load to a deeper soil strata uh, and uh, it also resists uh, uplift uh, forces and it provides structural stability against lateral and overtaining forces. Uh, then uh, this pile foundation can be devoted based on its function and its construction material. Based on function, pile can be divided into three, sheet, pi sheet piles, load bearing piles, soil compactor piles. Uh, based on material and, material and construction method, uh, this can be divided into timber, concrete pile, steel pile and composite pile. To, going to sheet piles. Uh, sheet piles are the section of sheet materials uh, with the interlocking edges that are driven into the uh, ground to provide uh, excavation support. Uh, it is mostly provided to uh, uh, provided for the lateral support. Uh, this sheet piles will resist lateral pressure from the loose soil and the flow of water, and also it can be uh, used in cofre dams, trench sheeting, shore protection, etc. Uh, the main purpose, uh, 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 they are usually, uh, usually uh, used in the uh, following purpose, that is construction of retaining wall, protection from uh, river bank erosion and um, to retain the loose soil around the foundation trenches uh, and also um, for the confinement of soil to increase the bearing capacity of the soil. These are the purpose, uh, purposes of uh, providing sheet pipe. Uh, this is a figure showing sheet pile and then load bearing pile. Uh, load bearing pile is mainly used to transfer uh, the vertical load coming from the structure to the soil. Uh, it uh, transmit uh, the load from the uh, structure uh, and safely transmit to the soil. Uh, depending on the load transfer mechanism, load bearing piles can be divided into two that is end bearing piles and friction piles. Uh, from the name um, uh, end bearing piles, uh, the load pass through the lower tip of the pile and uh, the bottom end of the pile rests on a strong layer of soil strata. Uh, the total capacity of end bearing pile can be uh, can be computed as uh, multiplying the area of tip of the pile with bearing capacity of um, that particular uh, soil uh, and also considering a reasonable factor of safety the diameter of pile can be can next going to friction pile uh, in friction pile uh, the uh, load is transferred by the uh, uh, transferred from the structure to the soil by frictional force between the surface of the pile and soil um, surrounding the pile. Uh, this uh, friction can be developed to the entire area of the pile. Uh, uh, it depends on the soil characteristics and the total capacity of the friction pile can be um, computed as by multiplying surface area of the pile with say friction 
ഫോഴ്സ് പെർ യൂണിറ്റ് ഏരിയ വി ക്യാൻ ഇൻക്രീസ് എ കപ്പാസിറ്റി ഓഫ് ബ്രിക്ഷൻ പൈൽ ബൈ ഇൻക്രീസിങ് ദ പൈൽ ഡയമീറ്റർ ഡെപ്ത് നമ്പർ ഓഫ് പൈൽസ് ആൻഡ് പൈൽ സർഫേസ് നെക്സ്റ്റ് വൺ ഈസ് സോയിൽ കോമ്പാക്ടർ പൈൽ ഇൻ സോയിൽ കോമ്പാക്ടർ പൈൽ പൈൽ ആർ ഡ്രിവൺ അറ്റ് പ്ലേസ്ഡ് ക്ലോസ്ഡ് ഇൻറ്റർവൽ ടു ഇൻക്രീസ് ദ ബിയറിംഗ് കപ്പാസിറ്റി ദിസ് ഇസ് എ ഫിഗർ ഷോയിങ് എൻ ബിയറിംഗ് പൈൽ ആൻഡ് ഫ്രിക്ഷൻ പൈൽ നെക്സ്റ്റ് വൺ ഈസ് ട്രിമ്പർ പൈൽ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഓഫ് പൈൽ ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ മെറ്റീരിയൽ ട്രിമ്പർ ട്രിമ്പർ പൈൽ ആർ പ്ലേസ്ഡ് അണ്ടർ ദ വാട്ടർ ലെവൽ ദ ഷേപ്പ് ഓഫ് ദി ടിമ്പർ പൈൽ ഈസ് റെക്ടാങ്കിൾ ഓർ സർക്കുലർ ഇറ്റ്സ് ഡയമീറ്റർ വേരീസ് ഫ്രം ട്വൽവ് ടു സിക്സ്റ്റീൻ ഇഞ്ചസ് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ലെങ്ത് ഈസ് യൂഷ്വലി ട്വൻറ്റി ടൈംസ് ഓഫ് ദ ടോപ്പ് വിത്ത് ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ ദ ദേ ആർ ഡിസൈൻഡ് ഫോർ ദ ലോഡ്സ് ലൈക് ഫോർട്ടീൻ ടു ട്വൻറ്റി ടൺസ് അടി ഫോർ പ്രൊവൈഡിങ് അഡീഷണൽ സ്ട്രെങ്ത് വി ക്യാൻ പ്രൊവൈഡ് ബോൾട്ടിംഗ് ഫിഷ് പ്ലേ ടു ദ സൈഡ്സ് ദിസ് എ ഫിഗർ ഷോയിങ് ഇൻ കാസ്റ്റ് ഇൻ പ്ലേസ് കോൺക്രീറ്റ് പൈൽ ഇൻ പ്രീ കാസ്റ്റ് കോൺക്രീറ്റ് പൈൽ പൈൽ ഈസ് കാസ്റ്റ് ഇൻ പൈൽ ബട്ട് ഇൻ ദ ഹോറിസോണൽ ഫോം ഇഫ് ദേ ആർ റെക്ടാങ്കുലർ ഇൻ ഷേപ്പ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ ഇഫ് സർക്കുലർ പൈൽസ് ആർ കാസ്റ്റ് ഇൻ വെർട്ടിക്കൽ ഫോംസ് യൂഷ്വലി Uh, reinforced with the uh, steel to prevent breakage during its mobilization from casting uh, and also uh, it is cured uh, it is cured as per is specification that is 21 to 28 days advantages of providing concrete piles are high resistance to chemical and biological crack the confinement of their reinforcement can be ensured quality of the can, pile can be controlled uh, and also it is driven under the water Uh, pile can be loaded immediately um, if it is driven to a record then disadvantages are once the length of the pile is decided we can difficult to increase or decrease the length of the pile and also it needs heavy and expensive equipment to drive uh, then also uh, there is a possibility of breakage or damage during handling and driving uh, of piles in cast in place concrete pile pile is constructed by boring of soil up to a desert depth uh, and also um, it is uh, constructed either by driving a metal shell to the ground and filling it with concrete and leave the shell with the concrete or shell is pulled uh, then advantages are uh, the shell used for the construction is light weighted and they are easy to handle and the length of the pile can be uh, easily varied uh, no excess reinforcement is required for the handling um uh, record uh, to prevent the damage from handling and disadvantages are installation requires careful supervision and quality control and also uh, it's a, it needs sufficient place to the storage of the materials um, and the, it is difficult to construct cast in in situ pile where the underwater flow is heavy and also if the pile is unreinforced and uncased uh, the pile can fail in ten and this is the figure piles and sheet piles sheet piles are concrete file uh, concrete filled in i section or hollow pipe the size varies 10 inches to 24 and um, its thickness 3 by 4 inches this advantage of steel pile are um, they are easy to install uh, and also uh, they reach a greater depth comparing to either pile um, uh, of uh, less cross sectional area it can penetrate to hard layer of soil it can also carry heavy loads disadvantages are uh, there is a chance for corrosion um, and uh, there is a possibility of deviating from the location while driving and also the, it is comparatively expensive uh, while comparing to other pile this is a figure showing then pier foundation pier pier foundation is a cylindrical structural member the transfer heavy load from superstructure to the soil it, uh, it is of two types masonry or concrete pier or drilled casements in masonry pile if a good bearing strata exit up to 5 meter masonry piers are used uh, the shape and size of pier depend on the nature and characteristics of soil in drilled casement and compressed member subjected to an axial load at the top and bottom uh, advantages of using pier foundation it is this method is very easy and it requires less amount of materials and labors um, and uh, it also saved money because there is a uh, less amount of materials and labor uh, then 
uh, it is minimum disruption for the soil environment um, because uh, uh, by using shovel um, and uh, shovel we can excavate and uh, excavate and the bearing capacity can be increased by under reaming the bottom and this is the figure showing then case and foundation it is a watertight retaining structure. It is a ready-made hollow cylinder depressed into the soil up to the desert level. And then it is filled with concrete and it converts to a foundation. It is used in bridge pyre, dams, etc. And then reason for choosing the caisson is that it can be floated to the desert location and then sink into the place. Different types are box caisson, floor then pneumatic caisson, open caisson, compressed air caisson, excavated caisson, monolithic caisson. Why caissons? When caissons are provided, when the soil contains, contain large boulders, um, we can provide caissons. Uh, when the foundation is subjected to large lateral load, we can provide caissons. Uh, when the depth of water level in the river or sea is high and uh, the load is needed to carry at the end, caissons are provided. When the uh, groundwater flow is aggressive, we can provide case box caisson. In box caisson, it consists of consists of boxes with the four sides and bottom and top box is open uh, and the concrete is filled uh, in the um, box on the ground and the prepared box caisson is floated to the foundation location and placed once placed in appropriate location the whole void space is filled with concrete is less costly it is used in the construction of bridge pyre and floating caisson. These are prefabricated pre boxes filled with the concrete. It is also, also called pneumatic caisson. It is a watertight or box caisson used in underwater constructions. Then open cases. It is similar to box caisson. There are two types. Top and bottom open and open. Top open and bottom closed. It is useful. It is suitable to for soft soil it is used for the formation of pier deep manholes pump station micro tunneling then compressed air caisson it is used for the past working condition where other methods can be uh, inconvenient excavated caisson they are placed within an excavated site and it is used in cylindrical in shape then back filled with then monolithic caisson, the larger size of caisson compared to others. Advantages of caisson are, it is less noise and reduced vibration. Uh, it is uh, adaptable for various site condition. Uh, it having high lateral and axial loading capacity. Disadvantages are, uh, not good for contaminated site and uh, it having lack of construction experience. Um, construction labels and also it having lack of qualified this is the figure showing uh, that can be provided in uh, bridges uh, and also uh, it depends on the um, type of it uh, uh, depends on the uh, nature and depth of bridge foundations uh, thank you thank you